What would it feel like to hear a book or see a sound? Today we will be talking about synesthesia, the mental phenomenon where senses can get tangled up. In synesthesia, the stimulation of one perception, such as a color or sound, can lead to the perception of another sense. Let's take this boy listening to music as our first example. Every time he hears a note, he sees an associated color. Next, let's take a look at this girl reading. For the words she reads, she hears associated music notes. Synesthesia comes in two overall forms, projective synesthesia and associative synesthesia. Projective synesthesia is when the person projects a second sensation into reality when their synesthesia is triggered. Associative synesthesia is when the senses are connected and associated in the person's mind. There are different theories for why this phenomenon occurs, one being that there is a neurological cross-linking between different processing pathways in the brain, and another attributing the perception due to associations formed during development. Different neurobiological explanations are attributed to different forms of synesthesia, and synesthesia can occur between any two senses or perceptions. Here are the five main sensory regions of the brain, and it is hypothesized that they are cross-linked in this phenomenon. In the next section, we will cover some of the more common types of synesthesia that have been reported, and their features and their potential neurological basis. The first form of synesthesia we will cover is grapheme color synesthesia. In this form, seeing a letter or a number triggers the perception of a color. It is one of the co most common forms of synesthesia. However, each individual experiences different associations between the graphemes and colors. People who experience this form of synesthesia have found it very useful as a memory device. It is hypothesized that it is due to cross-wiring of the pathway between the brain's color center and number processing center, which are located right next to each other. The next form of synesthesia is an association between sound and color. Chromesthesia is a synesthesia where the perception of sound triggers a perception of color. The sound that triggers a synesthesia can be as specific as musical notes or keys, or they can be general sounds such as talking and background noise. The colors that are perceived in this form of synesthesia are known as photisms, and they stay content, constant for the type of sound that triggers them. The next form of synesthesia is spatial sequence synesthesia. This is where number sequences are perceived as occupying points in space. While normal people may see the numbers of pi as a straight line, people with this form of synesthesia may see it as taking on a specific shape, such as spirals, columns, or circles. People who experience this form of synesthesia have been known to have superior memory and recall ability. However, the neurological basis for why this occurs is unclear. Finally, we'll go over mirror touch synesthesia. In this form of synesthesia, the individual feels the same sensation that they see another person experience. For example, if you see someone stubbing their toe, you would involuntarily feel a pain in your own toe as if it were stubbed. It can be activated by in-person experiences or even seeing someone virtually on a screen. This is a very rare form of synesthesia though. Overall, synesthesia is a fascinating phenomenon, but it is not an illness or mental disorder. Rather, it's a fresh way of experiencing the world through mixing of the senses that is unique to the individual. It is estimated that 3-5% to of the population, almost 1 in every 20,000 people, have some form of synesthesia. We know it is based in biology, as there is a genetic component when it is passed on from parent to child. However, there is still so much more that we have left to learn about this extraordinary ability. Thanks for tuning in.